This program is brought to you by Guiding Light Assembly. This came to me, I saw this on the internet about three or four years ago, and I just left it there. And a few days ago, I came across it again, and I just felt led to share from it with you. So it's a conversation between a young Christian man and his father, God. So the man asked God, Lord, how can I, a mere mortal, flesh and blood, how can I ever please the almighty creator of the universe, the ever living God? How can I ever please him? And God seemed to chuckle and said to him, live like a tree. The man was puzzled. How do I live like a tree? And so he asked God, how? And God said, why? Do men plant trees? And he started thinking and came up with a few reasons. He said, one, for their fruit. Two, for their shade. Three, for their beauty. And then God asked him, how many of these things you've named does the tree itself benefit from? Think about it. And he began to ponder, that's true. The tree gives us wood. It gives us fruit. The tree gives us shade. It gives us oxygen. The tree gives us so many things that it doesn't benefit from itself. And then God said, here are some very important things for you to note. The first is that no matter how tall a tree grows, it never leaves the ground. No matter how tall, it's fixed to the ground. So no matter how popular or important, no matter how responsible, no matter how much value is placed on your life, never leave the ground. Remain humble. And sad to say, sad to say, I, I hear all kinds of stories. One of the things that I... I, I don't can't abide is these huge convoys these huge convoys that our public officials ride in um, and i understand that in the national assembly all the new members have got their new suvs particularly at a time when as a country we're encouraging the people to tighten their belt and then we go out and spend huge amounts of money. And, and one of the things I respect IBB for, there are many things I didn't like about his, his regime, but one of the things I respect him for is from the moment he took office, his official car was a Peugeot 504. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you remember. And once the president, the head of state, the commander-in-chief, uses a 504 as his official car. Nobody in the military or government will do otherwise. They all cut their coat. I, I, I saw the car of our former president. I haven't seen the car of our present president. I, I hope he's using the same one, but. A Maybach. When the Maybach first came out, it was about $300,000.
Today, by the time you bulletproof it and then double it, because every convoy must have two cars. One decoy that looks is exactly the same as the original. We're talking about humility here. We're talking about humility. If they don't know what to do, we do. We can live, no matter how important we become, attached to the ground. Stay humble. God resists the proud. And, and, and you know, that's an active word, to resist. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The second thing that God told this man was that as the tree grows higher, it also grows deeper. As the tree grows higher, it also grows deeper. As you grow in life, what sustains you is your relationship with God. And I fear so many people, even in ministry, become so busy with ministry that they haven't any time left for their relationship with God, for Bible study, for, for prayer. As the tree grows in height, it also grows in depth. We must make time. You won't find time. Time is so elusive. You must make it and not search for it. Let me go to the third one. Every tree grows in the direction of its source of energy. Every tree. You would probably notice that if a tree is deprived of light and then there's just one small aperture where the light shines through, it begins to tilt towards the light. Many grow away from their source of energy. We are not self-contained so that we can live an independent, a life independent of God. He created us that we have a choice to, to depend on him or not. He said, choose life. I've set before you life and death. Choose life. But the choice is still ours. It's up to us to choose. The growth of the tree is measured by how close it has come to its source of energy. As you grow, people will not identify you, but their God in you. That's how they will measure you. Number four, God asked him, he said, son, have you ever seen a tree? And the man answered and said, no, Lord. Then the Lord told him, whatever I have placed on your life, whatever anointing, whatever gifts, whatever talent I have placed on your life, is not for your self-gratification, but for others, for the people I have placed around you. you. You should never see it as a means of rewarding yourself. Today we live in a world where you can telephone with your credit card and get a, a personal prophecy. It's called merchandising the anointing. It's happening. 
Today, anyway, let me not go. <laughs> you know, throughout Jesus' life and ministry, he never advertised healings and miracles. They came to him and asked for his intervention, but he didn't have to do any publicity. He said, and the and scriptures tell us that his fame was noised abroad by the Holy Ghost. Number five. The Lord told him, there is no tree reserved for a special kind of people. There's nothing like a tree for the rich and a tree for the poor. You should remain accessible to all kinds of people. On the way to Jarius' house, this woman, and understand this, this woman was regarded by Hebrew law as unclean because she had an issue of blood. Anybody she touched became unclean. On his way to Jarius' house, she came and touched him. And she didn't go away empty-handed. On his way to heal the rich man's daughter, he saw blind Bartimaeus on the way. Blind Bartimaeus could have been regarded by many as one of the, the um, what's the word? Discarded people of life. He's left to his own devices by the roadside. But once blind Bartimaeus called on him and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The blind Bartimaeuses of this life should be able to call on that person that is living like a tree. Number six. And this is not directed at the jackpots. But if the cap wears, fits you, wear it. Six, a tree never leaves the place it was planted. No matter how dry and scorchy the sun becomes, a tree will remain there. And at times even die there in the hope that someday its maker will send rain. Even if there's a greener, greener pasture just nearby, a tree would never leave the place of its planting. Remember Isaac, when there was famine in the land, desired to go down to Egypt. I like the word down because that would have been a downward journey. Decided to go down to Egypt. But what happened? God said, stay where I have planted you. Now, God may have planted you in Canada. Or in the UK. But if he hasn't planted you there, stay where he has planted you. I am confident that the greener pastures will come to Nigeria. You know, I've said it time and time again, that when a child is sick with malaria, you have to apply Nivaquine, and the child hates Nivaquine. It's, it's bitter. 
But we have become so sick. You know, the longer you leave the child with its malaria, the worse things get. Can get to the point where it could be fatal. But we have come as a nation to that point where fuel subsidy removal, exchange rate, and I'm not being political now, they are the never queen. We need to apply them. The important thing is to also take the other steps that go with it. That's important. There was a seventh one. A seventh one. I'll add an eighth if I have enough time. You have trees in the forest, you have trees in the city. A tree in the forest, where not too many people are there to eat its fruit, cannot say, because I am in the forest, I will not bear fruit. that I will bear fruit if there are people around to appreciate me. But rather that tree keeps saying to itself, just in case a hungry man shows up and says, where is the fruit on this tree? I will bear fruit. You bear fruit to please your maker, not to please people or to please yourself. The urban fruit may have people around it all the time. And so it's bearing fruit and it is appreciated. I see that tree, very good fruit, very sweet, very tasty. It's not praise for the, for the tree. It's praise for the maker of the tree. And then finally, and I'm adding this to the story. You can take a mach machete and strike a tree. The tree gives no visible sign of distress because it has learned to be spoken about and not discouraged. It has learned not to pay attention to gossip. I think this is one of the things we need to learn in the church. We get so bothered about what people think about us. If you're like a tree, your bark is hard, thick skin. Help, help my heart, Lord, to make me like a tree. 